In the wake of Crew-4, SpaceX's next astronaut launch for NASA, Crew-5 also slipped. That means SpaceX's next Dragon passengers will need to wait a little longer to get off the ground. The question is, what caused this delay? And how will it affect the launch date of SpaceX and NASA? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. NASA is delaying the next commercial crew mission to the ISS by nearly a month after the Falcon 9 booster that will launch it was damaged during transport across the country for testing. NASA announced on July 21st that the Crew-5 mission is now scheduled for launch no earlier than September 29th, after previously being scheduled for early September. The spacecraft will transport NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Casada, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina to the station. In addition to the schedule update, NASA and SpaceX also offered details about the rocket and capsule that will fly Crew-5. The mission will use the Dragon capsule Endurance, which also carried Crew-3 for a November 2021 launch. The capsule returned to Earth from that flight in early May. Although SpaceX routinely reflies its hardware, NASA noted that this flight will mark a new milestone. It'll be the first commercial crew flight to carry four veteran Draco engines to steer the capsule, with no new so-called forward bulkhead Draco engines. According to the statement, teams are also switching out the capsule's heat shield, parachutes, and pod panels. Interestingly enough, the Crew-5 launch will use a new Falcon 9 booster, a relatively rare event given SpaceX's extensive reuse of boosters. NASA said in a statement that SpaceX had to remove the rocket's inner stage, which is the section between the booster and upper stage, and some instrumentation after they were damaged during transport from SpaceX's factory in Hawthorne, California to its booster testing site in McGregor, Texas. SpaceX performed inspections and testing of the booster to confirm the damage was limited to the inner stage, work that NASA said it reviewed. The booster will now undergo regular stage testing at McGregor ahead of certification for a flight. Neither SpaceX nor NASA disclosed when the booster was damaged. At a July 13th pre-launch briefing for the CRS-25 Cargo Dragon mission to the station, Dana Weigel, NASA ISS Deputy Program Manager, said they were still planning a launch of Crew-5 at the beginning of September. However, at a July 20th briefing about the Artemis-1 mission, NASA officials said the launch had slipped. That mission has three potential launch dates of August 29th, September 2nd, and September 5th, which raised questions of potential conflicts with Crew-5 launching in early September. Before Crew-5 slipped, we were working closely with them, Jim Free, Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, said of discussions with the Commercial Crew Program about coordinating launches. We're going to put the same thing into practice if we end up going towards the end of September. Ironically, NASA has become increasingly comfortable flying astronauts on reused Falcon 9 boosters and Crew Dragon spacecraft. The Crew-4 mission that launched to the station in April used a Falcon 9 booster, making its fourth flight. As both NASA and SpaceX have gained experience with working together and SpaceX has accumulated a flight history on both the Falcon 9 booster and Dragon capsule, NASA has been thinking carefully about reuse and their certification process for reuse said Sandra Magnus, a member of NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, during the July 21st meeting of the panel. As a result, NASA was determined they are comfortable with up to a five-time reuse for both the Falcon 9 and the Crew Dragon capsule, she said. While SpaceX's mission is facing troubles, NASA's SLS Moon rocket booster is test-fired, and it's good. Northrop Grumman ignited a full-scale booster for the SLS rocket Thursday on a hillside firing stand, completing a two-minute test designated to demonstrate a new motor igniter and steering system for use on future versions of the giant moon rocket. The test began with the firing command at 4.01 p.m. EDT at Northrop Grumman's Booster Manufacturing Fueling and Test Facility at Promontory, Utah. The Flight Support Booster, or FSB-2, test was designed to help engineers evaluate new materials, processes, and improvements for upgraded solid rocket boosters that will power future versions of NASA's Space Launch System heavy lift rocket. The main objectives Thursday included gathering data on the performance of a new thrust vector control system that would be used to steer the rocket in flight. The FSB-2 test was also expected to demonstrate a newly qualified motor ignition system, qualified a new mazophenolic ablative solvent material, according to Northrop Grumman. The SLS Moon rocket is a central element of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon later this decade. 
the motor burned for 126 seconds, which is how long it will power the Artemis rockets during liftoff and early flight. And it was a great test, said Julia Cotabanda, motor team lead for the SLS boosters at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Positioned horizontally in a test stand for the hot fire test Thursday, the 154-foot-long booster generated about 3.6 million pounds at maximum power. The five-segment booster is an extended version of the solid rocket motor that flew on the space shuttle. The temperature of the rocket motor's exhaust reached about 3,700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than 2,000 degrees Celsius, as it exited the nozzle cone at the rear of the booster. The boosters for the first three SLS missions are either built or in production, and NASA and Northrop Grumman have booster sections left over from the space shuttle program for eight SLS flights. The booster segments were reused during the shuttle program, but will be discarded after each SLS mission. Some of the rocket motor's design changes tested Thursday could be introduced beginning with the ninth SLS flight, officials said. The current SLS boosters for the first eight Artemis missions are using a robust mix of new avionics and substantial heritage hardware from the Space Shuttle program, said Bruce Tiller, NASA's SLS booster program manager at Marshall, in a statement before the FSB-2 hot fire test. This particular ground test will demonstrate some new materials, a completely new steering system, and a new way to ignite the motor. Data from this test will improve our booster design for future missions that take us further into deep space than ever before. The solid field boosters will generate about 75% of the 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust for each SLS mission. The first SLS test flight, called Artemis 1, is scheduled for launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida no earlier than August 29th. If Artemis 1 succeeds, then NASA can begin to prepare for Artemis 2, which has a tentative launch date in the spring of 2024. This mission will take astronauts on a flyby trip to the moon and then return to Earth, setting the stage for Artemis 3, which will put boots on the moon again with a tentative launch date sometime in 2025, although all of these dates are subject to delay. Ultimately, NASA has ambitions to establish a permanent human presence on the South Pole of the Moon where the vital resource, water, survives as ice. And that's about it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.